ever wondered how to turn a simple 3D object into a cinematic scene with lightning, camera movements, and even some physics? In this video, I'll show you step by step on how to build a full 3D setup in After Effects with shadows, glowing effects, and objects that feel real. No plugins, just tools inside After Effects. Let's get started. First, I'm going to create a new composition and on the 3D renderer, make sure you use the advanced 3D and press OK. And now we have a new composition. I'm going to create a new solid layer to use it as a floor. And I'm going to change this solid layer into 3D object by toggling this on an X of rotation. I'm going to put 90 degrees so that it will be aligned on the floor. And I'm going to also increase the scale to be around 400 and drag it down so that it can be aligned to the floor. And I'm going to open the two views. And on the two views, I'm going to drag it a little bit more higher as well to make it aligned with the comp and i'm going to duplicate this layer as well and call it a wall and delete the x rotation from 90 degrees to zero and also drag this up higher to be aligned with the another solid layer now we don't see any difference because the colors are the same but you'll change it later on and now i'm going to drag and drop our 3d object and try to center it in the middle and also change the anchor point to be around the middle of the object as you can see it's a little bit off now so just make the select the anchor tool and try to align it with this 3D object. To center the 3D object on anchor point on the z-axis just put 100 and this will align our 3D object on the middle. And now we can change the color of the floor and the wall. So go to your effects, search fill and add it to your 3D object and then you can change the color to anything that you like. And then after you select just press OK. And now we're going to create a shape layer and on the shape player, we're gonna select the lips tool and make sure the fill is empty and only the strokes. And by pressing shift, just drag around and try to make a perfect circle. And you're going to have something like this. So just try to align it to the middle. And after that, change it to the 3D object. And now it's going to be a 3D. So we now we're going to rotate it to be on the ground. So on the X rotation, just press 90 and this will be like this. So drag it down to be in the middle of our 3D object and also align to, to be on the floor. If you're enjoying this video, consider supporting me on Patreon. You'll get exclusive project files, bonus content, and help me keep creating more videos for you. The link is in the description. Open up the two views on the second one, make it a top view. And now we will align it to be in the center using the scale and the position. After you're happy with the results, open the geometry option and increase the extrusion depth so that it can have a lot of depth and duplicate this shape layer and increase the scale so that it will be a little bit bigger than the original. Also drag it a little bit higher so that we can make a stage for the 3D object. Once you do that, duplicate back again and do the same thing. I increase the scale and also drag it a little bit higher on the Z axis to create a stage. And do this process as many times as you want. Once you're happy with the amount of the stages you want, and we're gonna move on to the next step. And now we're gonna create a new shape layer with a rectangle and white color. And after you create that, on top of this rectangle, we're gonna create an ellipse. So toggle around on the shape layer and make an ellipse. Make sure you press shift to make a perfect circle. Make the ellipse to be right at the middle. And also make sure the ellipse is on the bottom of the rectangle on our layer. And on the add button, you can add the merge path and make 
to change the from add to subtract to create a hole on our rectangle and the hole will look like something like this and also make sure you turn it into a 3d layer as well and we're going to use this to be on the top of our ceiling so on the x rotation we're going to put 90 and drag it up higher on to be right at the ceiling of our statue and on the geometry option i'm going to increase the extrusion depths to be higher so that the ceiling will be much thicker and now we're going to create a new light and make sure the light is a spotlight on the, and on the new after effect version we can cast a shadow on the spotlight so make sure you check on the cast shadows as well so create the spotlight and spotlight is going to look something like this and on the position on the z-axis make sure you put zero so that our light is aligned on the center of our comp and try to play around with the light to be right at the center of the statue and to be also a above our statue and the ceiling so drag it up on the z-axis to be right higher on the ceiling so the ceiling is going to have this opening and the light was going to shine on the statue to be like this and also on the light option you can play around with the cone angle and to make it more cinematic and the intensity of the light so and also play around with the shadow division as well and now I'm going to duplicate this light layer and to make little variation of light on top. So just uh, duplicate this spotlight and increase the cone angle to be a little bit bigger than the original so that it can light up our background and as well as the statue and the stages and play around with the intensity to whatever vibe you want to have and also the shadow diffusion to create that cinematic look and as you can see our light looks much better right now because there is a difference between the two lights and it creates that cinematic look and now i'm going to create a new camera and with a 50 millimeters and now we're going to add some camera movements into our scene and if you press c you can toggle around with the camera tools and using this tool i'm going to drag it a little bit higher so that we can take a look at the bottom of the statue and create this look and now i'm gonna create a new new layer for our camera control and after you create this new layer toggle around and using the pick whip tool attach it the camera to the new layer and let's rename it into let's say camera control and after you do that make sure also to turn it into a 3d so that we can use the three dimension rotation so toggle on the 3d and if you play around with the y-axis you can make that rotation effect and create that camera movement with the keyframes and also i'm going to create a new solid layer with a white color and using the cc ball action effect we're going to create that dust particles or like what i like to call it the stars so play around with the grid spacing the ball size and the scatter to create those dots that you like so just make it a bit smaller on the ball size and also increase the scatter and also play around with the grid spacing to make them more spacious or more dense depends on what you prefer and now we will create a new adjustment layer and on the adjustment layer we're gonna add different effects for example we're gonna add a noise effect to create that grainy look on our footage which will make it cinematic of course and also add the posterize effect and also add the glow effect on the adjustment layer and now we're going to play around with the noise increase the noise to create that grainy effect and also the posterize levels play around until you get the right amount and play around with also the glow intensity and the thresholds depending on your preference we can also animate the light 
and to add more movement into the light. So make a keyframe on the position of the light and move it across your core position to create that swinging light animation on our statue and the stage, which will create even more cooler effects. To add that transition between the two 3D objects just import it and make a transition using the opacity from 0 to 100 and from 100 to 0 and at the right exact moment when the transition happens of the statue add a spell hit and I'll put down in the description below for this asset so that you can use it as well and for this transition you can easy is the transition on the keyframes to make it much more smoother and after you do that you have done all of the right things well this is what i have for you guys today and if you like this video and you got some value out of it make sure to like and subscribe you would mean the world to me and i'll see you guys with another video with another tutorial till then love you guys bye